When we built our timing project, the make file made for us something called a memory map file. And that file tells us where the object code and other things were placed in virtual memory uh, on the actual final executable. So we can take a look at that file. And here in this first section, we can see the KSEG0, remember that's the cacheable memory section, the KSEG0 program memory usage. And we can see the addresses where the various uh, object codes were placed uh, in the final executable. Uh, the first one was placed at 9D001E00, and that's the largest of them, it's 692 bytes long. And then we go down in decreasing size of the, uh, of the code. And uh, we can look for that now by just searching for that address to see what was put there. So let's look for 9D001E00. And here we can see at this address in memory was placed the NU32.0, the object code corresponding to our NU32 library. In particular, here's where NU32 startup is, NU32 read UART3, and NU32 write UART3. We don't use read UART3 or write UART3 in the timing.c program, but we need the, the object code for NU32 so it all gets included in the final executable. Uh, so let's go back to the KSEG0 usage. So here, if we go down, we can see that the total amount of memory we used in our cacheable program memory is 1,508 bytes. And in fact, the code timing.c that got turned into timing.o is sitting here at this uh, address. We can look for that, 9D002190. And here we see our main function, our delay function, and our toggle light function. The other thing you can notice by looking at the memory report is that the sections are packed tightly. So right after you know, this address plus 2B4, we get the uh, next address. Um, so these are all packed tightly. They use about 1,500 bytes of memory. Uh, if we continue down, uh, we'll skip some of this for now. Uh, let's take a look at the KSEG1 data memory usage. And this is to store global variables. So if you have any global variables in your, variables in your program, the linker will allocate memory for them in the final executable, but we didn't have any. Um, so that therefore we're using zero bytes. And if we go down a little further, to the next sec section, dynamic data memory reservation, we can see that there's two categories here, the heap and the stack. Um, the heap is a memory that you set aside uh, at make time to hold dynamically allocated arrays. Now, this is something we're not going to need to do, so for us, generally, the heap will be zero bytes. On the other hand, if you want to create arrays that have variable size while the program is running, maybe create them and then destroy them and create new ones, uh, you'd need to allocate some memory in the heap. So we won't need to do that, so let's ignore that. Everything else, all the rest of um, your data RAM is towards the stack. And the stack holds temporary variables when you enter a function. Uh, any parameters that you use to call to that function are placed onto the stack, used while you're executing that function. And when you exit the stack, then basically they're sorry, exit the function, then those variables are basically discarded, so you free up stack space for the next time you call, um, you call a function. So this is basically reserved for local variables. Uh, and we've got essentially our, our entire 128 kilobytes available for the stack. Now let's go ahead and modify our program to define some global variables. And I'll do that just by getting rid of these comment lines here. And now we've got, let's see, five global variables. We've got my cat string, so it consists of seven characters, just says two cats. Uh, we've got an integer, um, 
that we've initialized to value of one. We've got another longer my message string that's got a long message that's initialized in the character array, the string. We've got another string here that's not initialized, but we tell, uh, we tell the, um, the build system that it's going to have six characters allocated for it. And then we've got another one that's going to have 97 characters allocated for it. So my message string is initialized. It's got values in it. My small string and my big string are not initialized. So now with that change, we can make again, then take a look at our map file. And I'll go ahead and open the um, timing. C, oops, open the timing.c file too so that we can look at it at the same time and in particular look at the global variables we defined. Now if we go down here and we look at the k seg1 data memory usage, which was zero bytes previously, now we've got four kinds of global variables defined. We have small uninitialized data, that's this one. We have small, sorry, small initialized data, small uninitialized data, uninitialized larger data, and initialized larger data. And um, let's take a look at uh, uninitialized data here. So this is uninitialized larger data, that's the BSS section. And that corresponds to my big string here, which has 97 characters set aside for it. It's not initialized, so that's why it's called uninitialized data. Um, but we ask for 97 characters to be allocated. Now you'll see here that actually 100 characters or 100 bytes got allocated to hold it. And that's because all of our variables must be word aligned. That means we never start a variable um, except for uh, on the boundaries of a word. And each word is four bytes long. It's a 32-bit machine. So we've got, uh, of, you know, we can have variables starting at 0, then at 4, then 8, and, and 16, etc. Um, so that's why it sets aside 100 bytes to hold it so that the next one can begin word aligned. Uh, so here in the small uninitialized data, uh, we, or sorry, the small initialized data, we have the two cats string and the integer. Uh, and the small uninitialized data, we have the my small string and the uh, uninitialized larger data here. We've got the my big string, and in the initialized larger data, we have this long message. So if we went down through the file, we would see that these variables are stored at the addresses that, that are written here, and those are in RAM. Okay? Uh, now we can see the effect that that has on the amount of stack that's available to us. So the stack memory has decreased. We don't have quite the full 128 kilobytes anymore, we've got a little bit less because some of RAM was allocated for global variables. So remember, this is the, this is the memory that can be used to hold, lo hold local variables, and above there, uh, the actual allocated space uh, was for global variables.